Hey, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Bird Brain 66 with your host, Brian Brecht. And over there, he's Andy Teague. Welcome, Andy. Hey, thank you. Glad to be here, as, as always. As always, we have a blast. Uh, today, we're going to go a little bit different with our show. Uh, we're not going to review a, a cardinal set, uh, but we are going to review cardinals. Uh, Andy and I have been talking about different topics, listening to what folks are saying through some of their uh, requests on BirdBrain66 on our Twitter handle and uh, our Facebook and uh, YouTube channels. So today we're going to start uh, at around 1964, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the catchers who have played for the Cardinals um, over the course of those those years, um, coming up really closely on uh, 60. And um, anyway... Um, it's been amazing throughout the Cardinals career to see, you know, some of the guys and the longevity that uh, the Cardinals have had at the catching position. So um, I'll turn it over to Andy and have him talk about a couple of uh, his favorites. And then we'll just have a little bit of fun with this. All right. Well, obviously the, uh, one of the uh, biggest favorites, is, uh, Yachty, and we missed, you know, we'll just mention him right out of the gate because, you know, future hall of famer and he's on the current team but we're not going to start off with him. I just wanted to mention him, you know, and the great thing about the, the category of the catchers is most people will know all the catchers that we're talking about. I'm, and I'm talking about the primary catchers, not necessarily talking about the, uh, any of the backup catchers that we talk about. So, you know, the intricate part of the uh, Cardinals uh, organization and, you know, teams and pitching staffs throughout the, uh, you know, genre, uh, the whole genre of the uh, Cardinals there, you know, when we could have gone way back, but we decided to start in the 60s with uh, Mr. McCarver because he's one of our favorites and as well as a favorite of those uh, before our parents and things of that nature. So got the uh, 64 uh, McCarver right there. Great looking card. 64, one of my favorite sets. We'll get to that one of these days. And my favorite McCarver card, I know it's hard to see here. There we go. Okay, is it? No, looks good. That's 68, 68. 68 insert uh, game card. Just love that card. And I did notice something about the uh, McCarver cards that I could never find one that really had an action shot of McCarver. It's always some kind of posed shot with him while he was with the Cardinals. So that's uh, kind of unfortunate, but that's okay because that's what it, that was a style back in the day when he was uh, with the Cardinals. And uh, who do you, who you got next up uh, in your set there? Well, before we do that, you know, um, we'll, we'll get asked this question from time to time, and then I'll show you a couple of the backups because I did pull a couple of the backups to McCarver, and that's one of the fun things that we can do too, you know. Uh, but let me first start out with this thought is that, you know, if you were putting together your top five catchers of all time, I mean, the, the, the guys that we're getting ready to talk about, including McCarver, would, you know, probably be among the top five catchers of all time. You may get a argument for some of the guys uh, earlier, like a Roger Bresnahan at the turn of the, you know, the 19, uh, early 1900s when, when he played and, and a couple of guys from potentially the uh, gas house gang, but, you know, we're, you know, leading off with McCarver, he's definitely, he's not number one, obviously we know that uh, Yachty's number one, but Tim's probably going to be right there at probably maybe uh, four five, maybe, maybe six, but you know, I was pulling up the 64 one earlier. And, and again, the, the crazy thing about the Cardinals and the, and the longevity of it is, and I'm going to show you some guys who are Tim's backup. We all know who these guys are. Mm -hmm. 1966, Pat Corrales, rookie year. He did play one season as the backup to uh, Tim. Again, sorry about the glare. That's actually my computer screen. With the glare coming back. Let me see if I can get that to where it's not doing that. But uh, Pat Corrales, 66 tops. We're going to go with a guy that we traded and picked up, um, Johnny Romano. He was a, a backup catcher for a while. And then uh, last but not least, this guy who was a great coach, wasn't really a great uh, hitting catcher, was always known as a defensive catcher, but he played several years as the uh, backup to uh, – Tim McCarver. And then what's great is that uh, we all know that uh, Simba, Ted Simmons, came up um, kind of in 68. His rookie card was 71, it's right? Because that's the that's a card I think. That, that is my – outside of the rookie card, which is the obvious pick, but this is one of my favorite cards of his right here. So, same here. Isn't yeah. that amazing that we picked the same? Yeah. The same card. But, but uh, go ahead. I'll let, you, I'll let you give a few uh, favorite memories of Simmons. I would be – 
I would say that, uh, well, I won't, I won't steal your thunder. If, if we were doing the top five, where does, where does, where does Ted rank for you? Number two. Absolutely. I agree. But, uh, so you got uh, Ted and then you got, uh, Ted and Tim, but I cheated a little bit in this, uh, this little drill we did because I also selected Joe Torrey, if you can see Joe there. Yep. Like the 1970 tops card and, uh, you know, Joe and Tim and, you know, a number of other Cardinals either came back in some form or fashion to the team as players, coaches, managers, and even broadcasters. So, it's very, it's really incredible when you you know, look back at the uh, history of the Cardinals and you know some of the roles that these catchers have played with the team. You know whether it's on the field or off the field. So like I said, I did cheat a little bit and picked uh, Joe Torre there, but uh, that's okay. And uh, definitely uh, Simba number two. You know, uh, you know Yachty and then Simba. Not taking away anything from uh, Ted. You know, going in the Hall of Fame, obviously. So there you go, McNurtry. Yeah. He was uh, the backup for a couple of, uh, he was 71, 72. I'm just, I'm cheating a little bit. And then, hey, Tim McCarver came back in 73 and 74 and was uh, Ted Simmons' backup. So they kind of flip-flopped there. Yeah. Um, many guys, we talked about the 75 set, but here's Ken Rudolph. So he was uh, 75 and 76. These are all guys who are pressing to, you know, take up some of uh, Simba's playing time. And, and like we've seen with McCarver and like we've seen with Simba and like we've seen with uh, uh, Tony, uh, well, not Tony Pena. He, he played for a couple of co a cup of coffee until he hurt his wrist, but uh, obviously out of Molina, but here's Doug Rader, 77. Yep. And then uh, this guy who came over from the Cubs, Steve Swisher, he was the backup to Simba in 78, 79. I didn't do a good job. So and I didn't pick all, I didn't pick all the backups out, but I'm glad he did uh, do that because there's no, it's just kind of, it's kind of fun funny, to go down memory lane. Well, the funny thing is, it's it's you know when you look back at him, you know you remember these guys, and and you just mentioned Yachty, you know, and you look over the past you know 17 almost 18 years of his career now with the Cardinals, you know how many people, oh this you know especially probably in the last you know three to four years, oh this is going to be Yachty's uh, you know successor here, but uh, as you see. Most of them have moved on either out of baseball or to another team. So there is not a, a success of the Yachty yet. So, and that's great because they'll love watching him. So here's one of the tweeners that was yeah, pressing yeah, for yeah. time. Yeah. So he was, he was, you know, he was in between kind of like, uh, what are we doing with Ted? And then obviously we've talked about this card before. Yeah, I actually selected selected the eighty two, and that's obvious, you know, just because his role in the uh, eighty two World Series. But I almost actually almost selected that card, so it's funny that uh, you picked that one. Well, then here again, because he was the backup for a number of years. Here's the second card of yep. Steve Swisher, because he was a backup to uh, to Daryl. And then I'm just going to keep having some fun with you here for a little bit, and then we'll go on after that because it's going to get a crazy for a little bit. But remember when we picked up Gene Tennis? Yeah, he was he was really instrumental in some big wins in, in 1982, and who can forget this guy? Oh yeah, Mr. Drummer stealing home. Yeah, that's I mean that's such a a classic uh, rewind in history right there. Nieto, yeah, yeah, taking on uh, Ted's number. So you know you get through you get through McCarver, you get through that transition phase of you know is somebody gonna uh, take over for Ted. And the answer was no. I mean, Whitey's the one that traded, you know, Ted and we, and we got uh, Daryl Porter. And then uh, this was the one we talked about before we started. This one is going to maybe cause some people to grumble because he actually did not like playing here. That, that, he, so he played maybe a season. I don't even remember if he made it through an entire season. To be honest, and, I, I couldn't tell you. I'll talk about yeah. He just he just did not like um, did not like being here, and then we went through this era with you know Mike was coming up and hey uh, he could be the heir apparent now to uh, Daryl Porter he could uh, you know be the be the catcher but lo and behold ready for this guy there you go look at that look at that 
So when I was putting together this show, my wife said, are you going to have a Tony Pena card in this, in this conversation? I said, absolutely. She was a big uh, Tony Pena fan. So, so we get through. He had a unique catching style too, if you remember. With part of his leg out there while he was catching. So. Yeah, he was great at blocking the ball. Just a great defensive catcher. And then you remember his first season with us, all of a sudden his uh, offensive production just went south and they couldn't figure out what was going on with him. And somebody jokingly said, we ought to get your eyes tested. And he goes, ah, ha, ha, that's a funny, you know, typical baseball joke. Well, it turns out it was absolutely right. Do you remember then like the following season after that? Uh, I think that's the 85 card, or 86 card that uh, he <laughs> go in and then he's wearing glasses the rest of his career. So it was, that, that was really it. And I think after they, after he got the glasses on, he hit like uh, 264 and, and, you know, finished out his career over, over 250, but he just had that one really bad season of about like 215, 216, and he couldn't hit because he couldn't, couldn't see. So uh, anyway, so uh, as we're transitioning, we, where, where do you have, uh, where do you have Daryl ranked in all of this? And it's really tough because of his time with the Cardinals. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a long time. So, man, that's a – I'm looking at the – I'm looking through some of the catchers right now. Man, I would maybe – if we're talking – are you talking – we're talking out of from 64 to now. Yeah. Oh, I would put him uh, number four then. Perfect. Yeah, we're thinking along the same lines. That's exactly where I would I would put him because then we go through. Probably the next person you're going to pick is number three. Yeah, I would. But I'm going to go and, and I'm going to have some more fun with you here as we uh, transition again as we're getting closer and you know into this. Remember yeah, Steve Blake? Great. Yep, he was a great backup. I loved that uh, the battery when he was with the Cubs when it was Trout and Lake. That was always yeah. a that was always a great. So did Harry Carey, by the way. Yeah, and then remember this enigma. Oh yeah, Mister Z. So he was he was the heir apparent, and remember he caught one season, and we decided that uh, they made the decision that he really didn't have the tools to be a full time catcher. So they did the Joe Torre move, and they moved yep. him to uh, third base. And then this one becomes my un- unsung hero. Oh yeah. Coffee. Like that, that, and that's who I was referring to. Obviously, number three in that in our uh, rank yep. of, these, of these guys right now. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, Tom quietly had or actually a remarkable um, career. And uh, I'm just looking down. I had to cheat a little bit because I was going through so many of these. So he he took a cup of coffee, you know, in the '87 and the eight, '88 season before he became the full time catcher. But he caught for. 10 full seasons for the Cardinals yeah. and put up some pretty, pretty impressive numbers. I know he won a couple of gold gloves, believe it or not. Um, so he's in there. And then. Unfortunately for him, he was with, uh, with the team when it wasn't uh, at the height of its uh, best success, successive streak there, you know, kind of a downturn for him, kind of like it was in the seventies. So the nineties were kind of similar to that. Oh yeah. Rich Goodman. Yeah. Yep. So that was one of Pags backups. And here, I think you've said that before that this is one of one of your kind of your favorite guys. Oh yeah, Eric yeah. He's got a great card when he's eating some food in the dugout too. So I, I yeah, I like that. We need to make that one the random. Yeah, one the of the random upper, card. One of the upper deck cards. Yeah. So. Okay, so then here comes the guy who's supposed to be the uh, heir apparent to uh, Pags. Yeah, I. Eli. Yep. But unfortunately that did not pan out for Eli either. Yeah. Well, Eli, if you remember, didn't he have some sort of a health challenge? Didn't he uh, have a cancer scare or something? He had like thyroid cancer or something. And that really kind of set him back. And then um, in my research, when, when the Cardinals finally traded him after the Oh three, maybe into the beginning of the Oh four season, he, they traded him to the Braves and he, they, uh, got him from behind the plate, and they played him at uh, first, third, believe it or not. And he played yeah. some outfield, and actually had a had a decent decent career after they uh, moved him from behind the plate. So, yeah. and he's also, you know, during that uh, that uh, two thousand year, was 
uh, when uh, Walt decided to shake up the team and uh, and turn the team around, and we get we had a great deal of success, you know, in the two thousands, you know, with uh, Paul Jockety as the GM. So obviously, we brought in another fine uh, defensive catcher at that point in time, and he would come. Also, another guy that would come back to manage the Cardinals. It's just it's a theme. There he is. Mike Matheny, now the uh, skipper of the Kansas City Royals. Former, That's correct. Former Cardinal manager. So where is he ranked then for you? Oh, man. I would have to put him number five, I would say. I'm about the same. So just to recap real quickly, and then I can go through a couple of his backups before we get to the great uh, Yachty or Molina. But yeah. uh, what are your what are your memories of, of – uh, Mike, I mean, he was definitely big in that, uh, in that on that 04 season. I know that we didn't beat the, the Bo Sox, but. Well, I mean, you, if you look at him, you know, when he was behind the plate, you know, that uh, during that, his tenure there, you know, the cards, like I said, had a lot of success when he was a catcher, you know, at that, that particular, you know, t- time frame. You know, we brought in Edmonds, you know, Pools was coming up, you know, and. You know, Roland was there around that time. So we had a lot of uh, great players, you know, at that particular time. So, and he had a great pitching staff, you know, and one of the, one of my favorite pitchers, for, you know, from that era, that time frame is uh, Matt Morris too. So, you know, he caught some really, really good uh, pitchers that we, you know, we had there and he did a really good job with the staff. So yeah, uh, he, he was good for, uh, you know, for Yachty to come up under, and, you know, his, uh, you know, spread his wings underneath it there when Mike was there, but. Uh, yeah. And Carlos Hernandez was the last card I held up. He was the backup for a while, for a couple yeah. of years to, uh, to uh, Mike. And then obviously we know that uh, what happened next after that. So I, I picked this one. This is one of my favorite Yachty cards right here. Cause, yeah. Bueno. yeah. Cause you got the battery right there. You know, that's. Two of my two of my favorites. I mean, class class act, both of them. You know, love watching them still to this day. And uh, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. It's gonna, it, it'll be a weird time when they are not with the Cardinals but once they uh, once they step away from the game. That's Jason Larue, one of Yachty's backups. I'll just do a couple yeah, of these, and we'll continue and, on. And if if I remember correctly, he suffered a head injury in a fight with the Reds, so that kind of ended his career a little bit early. Gerald Laird. Yeah, Gerald Laird. Here's one of the guys currently right now who was is supposed to maybe be the heir apparent. Ken's- Andrew. Yep. Yep. A little bit too close there. But, uh, you know, we traded away Carson Kelly. He was the uh, heir apparent there for a while. But, uh, obviously, Yachty is our, is our number one, and there's, you know, nobody who's going to argue that. He's had, he's had great success, too. So, you know, moving on from the organization, you know. And, that's, and, you know, it's either fortunate or unfortunate. You know, sometimes you don't get to move guys out because there's just no place to, you know, bring them up and put them in. But there's other times that the cards have done that, and you're like, man, I wish we had that guy back. Right. So with the with the exception of um, Ted Simmons, I mean, uh, um, here's a here's a great uh, question for you. I mean, the, the Cardinals prove that yeah, there's a lot of position players out there that are important, but your backstop uh, is you know obviously the most important position player in order to build a foundation around. I mean, look at McCarver, his success. You know, yeah. you look at Molina's success. You look at Daryl Porter's success. I mean. Uh, Matheny did have the uh, 2004 uh, World Series appearance. Simba was a great uh, switch hitting catcher. May have one of been may have been the greatest switch hitting catchers yeah. of all time in the Cardinals Hall of Fame. But uh, talk a little bit about that if you if you got a second. What's your thoughts on on the catcher being a you know if if not the most important player outside of potentially the shortstop who is, you know, who in your mind is the, the foundational player think, that you build the team it is, I think it is a, a catching position is the foundation of the team. So you have to have somebody that's solid. So, and I think that's why you see, you know, at least the Cardinals have always done that. They've, they found that one particular guy to step in there and, to, and to, you know, it's, you know, you're on field, they're an on-field manager. If you look at an on-field pitching coach. So, 
you know, it's, it's, it's the probably, it's mo- probably the most important. It, I, it's more important to the manager, you know, position because, you know, we see Giotti time and time again, you know, he'll go out there and he'll talk to the pitchers. He'll try to, he'll try to try to write the pitchers before even the pitching coach comes out or the manager comes out and, you know, and he's moving the defense around and making sure people are w- where they belong, you know, and the catcher's got a lot of responsibility, you know, and, you know, they, they always call the, uh, catching equipment to tools of ignorance, you know, because, uh, it, you know, it gives, they always said an ignorant player person would have to stand, step back there and take that kind of abuse, but actually they're, you know, very intelligent and, uh, you know, they, 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 they keep the flow of the game going and then, and, you know, and you can't do without, you, I can't think of a team that's been successful that didn't have a, a great catcher behind the plate. I just can't, you know, you can't, you can't. Look our, yeah. Look at our very own uh, Yogi Berra from here in the St. Louis area, yeah. you know, leading the, leading the Yankees all those years when they had all those great players. But I mean, it was really, you know, Yogi being the, the anchor of that team. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that uh, I forgot to grab a card of Gary Bennett. He was always one of my favorite players oh, in that yeah. 2006 World Series team. And, and we, you know, in, in, with the Yachty backups, I just kind of ran out of time. I didn't grab them all, but they're, you know, in 17 years, there's, there's, been, been, a there's been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. What about your buddy? Uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but uh, Joe Mather, remember? They experimented with him behind the plate for a while. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, and, you know, they thought he was going to be the next great thing at one point in time. And unfortunately, you know, it didn't work out for him either. You know, and that, that's a lot, you know, that's one of those things, you know, you get, you know, organizations get these prospects and, you know, and to me, you know, your pros- prospects are great. And, you know, we talk about, hey, we got to hang on to this guy and we can't move him. And then, you know, to me, you know, I think somebody so they said in a broadcast recently, you know, a prospect is a prospect until they, you know, they're a major league player. So you can move them anywhere because you because you always need the talent at that particular time on your team to win and be successful. So and we've and we've seen that throughout the years with you know, with people we've moved and people, you know, fans get upset and uh but uh, for the most of the time, you know, Mosaic has been, you know, spot on and Walt Jockety before him spot on as far and, you know, Whitey. So, you know, the, the moves that they've made, you know, just, uh, you know, were just phenomenal and the players that they brought in and they, again, they got these guys on the team too. So, you know, you got to get the, you got to give the general manager a lot of credit as well. Yep. Another guy I forgot about is just, you know, I'm trying to remember some of the names that uh, were backup catchers. We had Tony Cruz Jr. for a while as, as a yeah. backup. So, I mean, there's, there's with again, with Yachty, there's, there is a bunch of them. So just to kind of recap, uh, what, again, what we know you, there's. What, you forgot, you forgot one, you forgot one, we forgot one catcher we didn't mention. Of course. From it, the Yachty? Huh? From no, the Yachty? Yachty? Uh, no, I was going to talk about Akendo because he, he did catch. <laughs> so. We get it. We get it. You know, secret weapon. We can't forget to mention. You know, got to give him some love. Yeah, we got. You got to throw it out there to Kendo because uh, I forgot about that. Yep, when yeah. he played all nine positions in the in the in the one game. That that is right. correct. Oh, that's cool. So to recap, who are who are your top five then? After I mean, there's obviously everybody that we just talked about. So, well, obviously it's uh, it's Yadi and and Simba. And who did I say? Who did I say was number three? Oh. Ags, then Porter, and then Matheny. Yep. And again, there'll be some arguments here and there for some guys, you know, that we missed in the in the especially the Gas House Gang, and again the, at uh, Brezhnev. It is a different, is a different time frame that we weren't yeah. really we weren't discussing that. So that that's for another argument because it. Because if you go back in time, there's players that are so great, you know, they're just, a, they're at another level, you know, yeah. they're like, I mean, they're legendary. So, and, it's, and a lot of these guys are too, but, you know, you gotta, you gotta put the, uh, that, that error in a different uh, category. You know, that's just the way it is. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm not going to make you remember all of our handles or anything like that. Uh, but if Third grade you got to at whatever, <laughs> that's right so i'm going to put you on the spot though and i'm not uh so you've got to see both uh simba and you've got to see yadi um you know catch mm-hmm. both in you know both in, both in their prime um flip a coin who who is you, who is your favorite yadi i mean hands down i would yeah. agree it's 
it's tough, but yeah, I mean, that was, Ted was my boy who had, uh, one of my but, boys. Yeah, I mean, Gretton, growing up, obviously growing up, he was the guy, you know, but, you know, over, you know, over time, you know, Miyadi's just, uh, he's stolen that thunder, you know, he's, yeah. Miyadi, I mean, you can't. He's definitely a once in a generational type catcher. I mean, can, I mean, do you remember the spring training game this year where he taunted, not taunted, but he dared the guy to, to oh, um, yeah. steal second base. And, and how is that that you you're able to, you know, go ahead, try to steal off me. And then of course he throws the guy out. He's been phenomenal this season with throwing guys out at the yeah. at second base, trying to steal at him, steal off of him. And I know you still have to run because that's part of part of baseball. And I know that that's, what gets, uh, you know, Yachty going the most. Yeah. So, all right. One, one final question for you. Um, I want to show you something one. before, before we sure. take it here because I, I have a Cardinal shirt on, but it's not the uh, Cardinal shirt that, you know, <laughs> the big red. How about that? Yeah. The football yeah. team. That's awesome. Yeah. Had a, had That's a, a cool one. Had to get done on there. But uh, yeah. The back in the Jim Hart, Jim Otis, Terry Metcalf, Dan Deardorff era. Lots of great, lots of great memories of those guys as well. Oh yeah. But uh... so my question to you is, and, and this one I'm I'm I go back and forth on, on on the debate. I'm I'm leaning more toward it or not. And I know that he's got a he's got an uphill battle to climb with the national writers, but is Yachty a Hall of Famer in your eyes? Oh, hands down. Hands down. Well, that... I would agree. Question. I know. I know. A lot of people don't think so, or don't consider, you know, consider him to be a Hall of Famer. And if you look back, you know, a lot of people didn't think Lou Brock was a Hall of Famer either. So, you know, but he certainly, certainly is, and certainly was, you know, by, by the career that he had, and said the same with Yachty. And I think, you know, the Cardinals get an unfair uh, tick mark off the box for some reason because of where they're located at, and they don't have the, you know, the press coverage that. Uh, you know, the East and West Coast players do, you know, unless somebody's truly standing out on a team, even for teams like, you know, the, you know, the Brewers or the Astros or teams like that, they, they fall into similar categories, you know, they have a lot of trouble, you know, getting their players in the Hall of Fame too, you know, because just they don't get the coverage that, you know, the, you know, people on the coast do as far as, you know, what they, you know, and, and you can't tell me that anybody's as good as Yachty that's out there, you know. But if you, because if you look back since Yachty's been in the game, you know, you, we've seen a number of catchers. Everybody's like, oh, this guy's this and this guy's that, but Yachty's still around and they're not. So, I mean, I mean, that's, that's all you get. That's all you need to know. And he's, Buster Posey's one of those names that comes to mind. What's that? I said Buster Posey's one of those names that come to mind who, yeah, he was with the Giants for three World Series championships, but he's no longer around. I uh, can, you know, Case in point, Jason Kendall was another one for the Pirates. I, those guys aren't even on the same, you know, on the same playing field. No pun intended. But right. you know, to, to to lead your team to you know the World Series that he has led him to. Uh, I heard somebody on the radio the other day it was a national guy say that uh, Yachty's only got one World Series ring. I'm like, what are you talking about? He won in '06 and he won in, in 2011, yep. and he was on the '04 team. It's like and the '13 team. So it's like I don't I don't get what you know what the big, what the big stink is. And, and uh, I wish I had numbers in front of me to, to, you know, to back this up too, but I would think that he has to rank up there, you know, in the top three, if not number one at throwing guys out, you know, on, on steel attempts. And, I think uh, it's more, I think, it, I think a lot of it's more or less too. They, they only take the offense into consideration for the hall of fame, which thankfully they, that is not the case because, you know, Ozzie Smith wasn't ever gotten the hall of fame. So, right. You know, his just like just like Ozzy, his defense, you know, speaks volumes for his career. I mean, that you, you, it's the best there is, the be, you know, over the course of his career, just like Ozzy. So they're kind of to me, they're kind of the same category when you go in that Hall of Fame argument, because, you know, what they did as far as, you know, leader leadership on the team and also with their, you know, defensive prowess on the field. I mean, you. You can't, you can't match that. You need that. I mean, that's, that's Hall of Fame caliber, the way those guys, you know, played the game and, and uh, carried themselves. So, no, hands down, Hall of Famer. 
Yeah, I agree. And one, one, my final thought on this or final take on that too, is, you know, Dave Duncan has gotten a lot of, of uh, credit over the years when he was the pitching coach for the Cardinals, all the, all the guys that he brought off the, uh, you know, scrap heap after an injury and when was able to turn him around, Todd Stottlemyre will tell you that he was a three time world series champion and to come to the Cardinals and do that. But, you know, what really helps me elevate Yachty's, um, you know, credentials for the hall of fame is that, I mean, how many guys, you know, that they have their careers resurrected and, you know, coming here, yes, it was Dave, but it also had to do a, a lot with Yachty's leadership. How many times have you seen, you know, pitchers in key situations, whether it's Wayno, you know, Joel Pinero back in the day, Stottlemyre, whoever it was, you know, the game is on the line. It's a uh, three, two count. And uh, Yachty calls for a curb or a slider that's in the dirt and he blocks the plate and he yeah. either fires the ball down to first base or the guy doesn't even get out of the batter's box and he's, you know, he's tagged him out, you know, that ball in the dirt and blocking it on that third strike and given, you know, given pitchers the confidence, you know, to, to throw that ball, you know, or maybe it doesn't hit the dirt, but it's darn close. And he's, you know, he's, he's almost always in that, you know, shifts his body correctly. And, um, uh, well, anyway. along those lines, you, you need to mention Chris Carpenter in that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's phenomenal when he got to the cards. So, I mean, and then Yachty was right there with him, you know, and Dave Duncan, as, as you mentioned. But like I said before, you know, Yachty is the – he's also the de facto pitching coach and manager, you know, on the field. That's just the way it is. And yeah. you see it out there in every game, you know, the way he carries himself and what he does – you know, when, in regards to his teammates out there on the field. So, yeah, high respect for him. Yeah, I mean, we know that he'll be wearing a red jacket, but I sure do hope to go to the outfield here in about five, seven years and see number four, you know, yep. on the wall, meaning that it was retired because he made it to uh, Cooperstown. That's yep. That would be awesome. He will be there. May not be a first-year uh, ballot, but – I, I agree. I, I think he's a Hall of Famer and the season that he's putting up now. And if he has if he has one more year in him, although next year we know is could be the potential for a strike year. So this might be his swan song. He and and Adam Wainwright because of that. But right here and there, I think he's a I think he's a Hall of Famer. So anyway, um, any final thoughts from you? No, yeah, just uh, we'll do, do something like this again with some different positions or some different categories of things that we. Uh, we've gotten some ideas on and gotten some feedback from folks on. So, you know, you know, look, keep a lookout for it and keep watching and keep checking us out. And, uh, you know, and it's always, these things are always great for argument for argument's sake, you know, and somebody else will say, well, I don't think any of those guys are the greatest catchers in the Cardinal. Who knows, you know, different people have different thought processes on it, but I did find it interesting that we picked a number of the same cards there. That's kind of, that's kind of funny. So, yeah. Yeah. Great minds think alike. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I will uh, wrap us up here, but I will tell everybody I'm not going to give away names of anything, but we have a couple of more really cool guests coming up who have confirmed we're just trying to get their schedule and our schedule to work out. So stay tuned for uh, guests when we will be talking about team sets again, or who knows, we may do something as fun as what we did uh, uh, recently with uh, Brad Ripplemeyer. We talked a little bit about his career and his dad yeah. and, baseball and all that sort of stuff so all right everybody well we're going to wrap up um over there is andy teague i'm brian bretch you've uh, been watching bird brain 66 you can follow us on twitter bird Bra at bird brain 66 is our handle facebook is bird brain 66 and of course uh please uh, consider subscribing to this youtube channel it's bird brain 66 as well and uh, with that, uh, man, I just hope you uh, get out there and enjoy collecting because there's a lot of fun stuff out there. And Andy and I keep discovering stuff all the time that we hope to talk and share with you at a later date. So with that, thanks for joining us. Peace.